All right. Um, talk about going badly. I want to, one other story that just caught my eye today, and I couldn't not comment on it because it's so funny sad. Funny sad. Really sad, but kind of funny. All right, so today, I mean, not that important in its particulars, but I think important in what it says about the world in which we live. Again, the mixed economy. So today, the CEOs of um, American Airlines, Delta Airlines, and United Airlines published a letter in the New York Times and the New York Post, a letter to President Trump, a letter that they also sent President Trump. So this is, they made public a letter that was sent to President Trump, I guess a few days ago, and it was put out as a four page ad in the New York Times and the New York Post to make sure that both the left and the right saw the letter, everybody sees it. Now, I don't know, it strikes me as collusion. Uh, maybe antitrust should look into it when the th CEOs of the three biggest airlines in the United States write a letter together, something something is off here. And of course, it is about collusion. They're upset. The three CEOs of America's largest airlines are upset that Air Italy, Air Italy is increasing the number of flights to the United States. Um, and therefore, reducing prices on the very profitable routes that Delta, United, and American have between the United States and Europe. And they point out, Air Italy is owned 49% by another airline, Qatar Airways, which is, the which is I guess, the, you know, the, out of Qatar, which, because of their heavy lobbying in the past, <laughs> has signed an agreement with the US government to not increase the number of flights to the United States uh, because, God forbid, it would cut into the profits of the American Airlines. A, a deal, by the way, struck by the Trump administration in the name of competition and in the name of capitalism to decrease competition and make sure that the American airlines are protected because at the end of the day, making America great means preserving American jobs exactly in the way that they exist right now today. And I know you're going to tell me that Qatar Airways is owned by the Qatar government and is subsidized by the Qatar government and therefore it's not fair trade. And all Trump is doing is establishing fair trade. And I've already ridiculed that complete and utter um, at least economic nonsense that that represent. But anyway, so they are writing a letter to the President of the United States, the so-called pro-capitalist President of the United States, the so-called pro-American uh, President of the United States, where they are urging him, not in the name of their profits, God forbid, not in the name of competition, God forbid, no. The letter is so, is written in a way as to appeal to Donald Trump, and not even to deal, appeal to Donald Trump, but to appeal to the rhetoric of Donald Trump. So here is, here is uh, the opening of the letter. Dear President Trump, your administration was built on the enduring principle, enduring principle note, that the U.S. government will stand up for American workers against foreign governments that break their trade agreements with our country. That's, that's true, that's, you know, but this is, what they're, this is what they're playing to, right? The American people are grateful for that promise. Today, America's airline workers are counting on you to step up on their behalf. Oh my God, you can see the patriotic, you know, the flags are waving, the, you know, America the Beautiful is playing, tears are streaming down. We're asking you, the President of the United States, to stand by your promise 
to protect American workers against those evil foreign governments who are breaking their trade agreements with our countries by encouraging competition and lowering prices. Oh, no, 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 that will we'll delete, e edit that part out, right? In the letter, they talk about the historic agreement, historic. I didn't know anything historic was done with Qatar, but the historic agreement that the Dem uh, Trump administration negotiated with Qatar Airlines. Really historic with Qatar? <laughs> and then they ask him to come to the rescue not of the airlines themselves, not of their profits, but to make Qatar Airlines, quote, stop hurting American workers, saying that the situation, quote, represents a grave threat to American jobs and the health of the airline industry. And it ends by, by saying this, we appreciate your resolute leadership in enforcing fair trade principles and ask that you continue to stand up for more than 1.2 million US workers whose jobs depend on a strong and vibrant passenger airline industry. <laughs> oh my God, this is what happens when you have cronyism. And of course, what is, why are they so crony? Now, let me just know, no more super chat questions because I have to end at about 5.30 and there are already too many. Um, so why is this airline industry so crony? Well, because they know, they know that their existence, their existence depends on laws that protect them from foreign competition. Right? We need American airlines. Why? We don't need American cars. We don't need American airlines. Why can't you fly British Air between New York and Los Angeles? Why can't Qatar Air come into the United States and compete between Miami and Houston? Why can't any airline? Like, do you know, because they're not allowed to. I'll give you an example of this in a minute. By law, no airline in the United States can be foreign owned or a foreigner cannot own more than 50% of a stock of an American airline. Why? This isn't capitalism. This is a joke. This is cronyism on steroids. This is how you make America crony again. This is how you entrenched crony interests by protecting American companies from competition. So when Virgin, when Virgin, the airline that flies between uh, primarily the UK and the US, when they wanted to launch an American airline, and, and they had one of the things that Virgin is known for is service and, you know, an amazing airline, according to people who have flown Virgin, they wanted to launch an American airline. They couldn't. They were allowed to use, they couldn't use the name, so they kind of call it Virgin America. And then they could only own 49% of the stock. They had to sell 51% of the stock to American interests. Now, what does that do? It reduces competition in the airline industry. Now, this goes both ways. It's not just America that's at fault here. I mean, I don't, American Airlines is not allowed to buy British Air, which is like the most makes sense I mean, maybe British Air should buy American Airlines. I don't care. But why do we have European Airlines, American Airlines, and Asian Airlines? Why don't we have a, 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 a transnational airline? Why can't I fly an American airline within Europe? Why can't I fly a European airline within the United States? Why don't we have robust international competition on domestic routes? I mean, it's ridiculous. And it's the reason why what you get on American Airlines is crappy service and high prices. Why can't Singapore Airlines, rated best airline in the world over and over and over again, why can't Singapore Airlines compete with American Airlines within the United States? I'd love to fly Singapore Airlines in the US. Imagine. And instead of these, all these airline startups, you don't need airline startups if you actually expand competition globally. 
So anyway, I thought it was really, really sad when American CEOs are pandering, pandering to Donald Trump to increase protection of their industry against competition. I want Air Italia to offer tons of flights to the U.S. so I can get, and all of us can get lower prices to Italy. And if that means American Airlines can't fly to those routes because they can't compete, so be it. I believe in freedom, which ultimately means competition. And let the best airlines win. So it's, man, the pandering. By the way, uh, kudos, kudos to JetBlue. JetBlue has refused to participate in this attack on Qatar and Italian airlines. I don't know if in the name of principle or in the name of what, but kudos to JetBlue for not being able to do that.